everyone. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker. Oh, my gosh. It's half Richard and half Derp Guy. Yeah, so we're uh, playing with Fun Song. This is Monday. We are somewhat slightly hyperactive. Um, but before we get into today's bro – hang on a second. Let me adjust myself. There we go. Hi, I'm Richard Carlton. Welcome to FMTrain.TV, where we create every day with your help. This wouldn't work without you out with every one of you who are there. Some of you are hiding, you're in stealth mode, you don't like to know that, we're, that you're watching us. So welcome everyone to an awesome day of FileMaker training. Uh, if I'm going to press the button right here, we can check the upcoming broadcast schedule. Today we got Jeff Cooper. Jeff Cooper will be here talking about cash drawers. It's like a drawer, you hit the button, out comes like a, a, a gun or, or, or money. Drawer. It doesn't have to be just money, it could be diamonds. Uh, you know, it could be all sorts of things. So then uh, tomorrow, checkbox basics. Tell a little bit about um, Boolean values, right? Uh, but basically a very, very, very basic day on value list and getting your head wrapped around it before you get to value list tell with Nick Hunter on Thursday. And then Wednesday, Calvin Mosin will be back keeping your greasy fingers off your mouse. This is uh, some tips and tricks and techniques so your users don't have to use a mouse if you think that's useful for them. Some people might be busy data entry people, in which case uh, keeping your greasy fingers off your mouse is a good idea. Then we got Nick Hunter for four days. You don't see the day four there. So that is the upcoming broadcast schedule. As a reminder, very important. Um, despite what all of you may think, uh, this actually, this project, this live streams burns a lot of money. How do you support the channel? I don't want free handouts. I don't want you know, send me a Patreon and just like some sort of poor homeless person on the street, give me 20 bucks. I want you to buy our training, which is awesome. Excuse me. It's very awesome. It's awesome training. So over here, you can go to fmtrain.tv. You can see the live streams here. Come over here to the bundles. You can stop and see the courses. You cannot buy the courses individually anymore. Why is that? Because there's too many of them. And we, it, it was hard for us to try to sell. This is like if you went to Starbucks and you could choose from 25 different coffees. Well, in the case of Starbucks, they do that. But they, they do it at scale, so they make money on that. For a small company like us, 25 courses is too many. So what we do is we put it into a bundle. You buy the bundle, you get the whole thing. And we have great deals on that. So uh, please press the button. And if you're interested in a double, double deal, Margaret will post the link for you to get the double, double deal. But we really support Brutterman's here. I know a bunch of you have this. We really appreciate when you uh, purchase a training because that allows us to um, that allows us to uh, pay the bills and pay Margaret and pay all these people. Things that have to be done. Well, uh, today is interesting day because uh, it's um, people come to me and I'm always asking for ideas. So if, so if some of you along the way have an idea, we Ooh. should really have a a live stream on a topic like uh, I want a live stream on a back massager that hooks to USB that hooks to your FileMaker app or something right um, and so if you uh, have an idea like that send it to support at RC Consulting so Scott Kane other people have sent me ideas uh, Jeff here sent me an idea about well I'm doing this receipt printer thing with this customer and I'm also doing this cash drawer thing and so it's not really about building the POS because that's like Let's build a CRM. It's a big thing, and I've never done one, so I wouldn't be the person to train it on anyway. But, but doing a receipt printer, you can use it for lots of different things. A cash drawer, I could think of two or three things immediately in the cash drawer that would be really handy, like that pops out, right, besides cash, right? So um, anyway, so what I want to do is welcome um, Jeff here. Jeff is here, and Jeff is on his screen. But do we want to take a look at the uh, uh, your camera first, Jeff, and take a look at that? Sure thing stop sharing here so all right so this is kind of a camera shot it's a little bit out of focus can you try to focus that a smidge or move it back and up or down or sideways or it's having a hard time there well it kind of focused oh, there so maybe yeah maybe hold it's... on let me close my window yeah once you yeah so it's so the cash drawer is on the bottom the receipt printer which we did last time jeff was here is up on top so we brought that back in case someone had a question about it because the cash drawer is not that horrifically complicated it's either yes or no open or don't open right it really the two commands you can send to it right so the cash drawer goes in and out so why don't you just demonstrate it going in and out right so sure so 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 if i have a stack of cash this is my a stack of what ten thousand us dollars looks like this is good for one tank of gas in California, for those of you wondering about that. <laughs> it's not quite that bad, but it is aggravating people. So why don't you 
So you know, like count the three and have it shoot out. Is that how it works, or does it work sure, random, it randomly whenever it wants to? How's that work? Uh, we can just I can click right now and we can go ahead. So I'll go okay, ahead and one. Send the oh, okay, That's you did it. it on one. There it goes. It shoots out. So there it goes. And then in there would be all your really awesome cash, right? So, uh, can you detect if the cash drawer is open or closed? First question from Larry the Marine. Uh, so in the response, there is some information on it, but you can't just send a request to find out if it's already open. No. And okay. you also can't make it closed. That's something that's always manually done. It's just a, a latch that releases and it's spring loaded. Okay. So because every time you see cash drawers, almost always you think about them. I've never really worked at the retail at that spot. My first job was not at Starbucks or something. I, I literally dug ditches no for a living with a shovel. Here's a ditch. Dig it. So when I say I'm going to dig ditches, I've been there, done that, bought the T-shirt, right? So you always see people kind of, the drawer comes out and they do stuff and then they push the drawer back in here, click, right? So that's kind mm -hmm. of that thing, right? So um, so do it one more time. So is it pretty responsive? Like if I say one, two, oh. went on two that here, time, we'll do, right? So or we'll why, don't do you right, count, right. why don't you count it down for us? All right, I'll click on three. One, two, three. So what, a half a second, if that, delay? Okay. Yeah, is pretty it much. Is it connected to the computer via USB? How is it connected to the computer? No. So this this cash drawer is actually connected to this printer um, through an RJ11, like a standard kind of phone cable that comes with it. Um, okay. So the requests actually go to the printer, and this printer, as it was when we did our first video on how to print, mm. uh, is just connected to the network via Ethernet. Okay, I need you to... Let's, let's go back and retread that because there are people here who will not have seen the last video. So we in a previous video, we discussed how you could print receipt using HTTP requests. So we do an insert from URL in FileMaker with uh, a body of text that the sample file that we gave out. Why don't uh, we go to why don't we go to your you? computer screen and take a look at yeah, this, sure. right? So so and it's so yeah, talk sounds, about us as the overall architecture, right? Like it's a web server or it's not a web server. Sure. T start so at the this beginning. printer. This printer basically has its own web server built in uh, that will accept requests in a very specific format. Uh, it's, it's just an API endpoint, really. Um, so we can build documents. Okay, hang on. The, I'm, gonna, this... I'm, gonna, I'm gonna restate this for everyone. Okay, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to cut in front. So the, the 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 printer itself has its own web server. If you've set yeah. up any security cameras recently or things like that. Almost every little device has its own little micro little web server in it. So you can connect to it with an HTTP request, right? So like when I set up like security cameras, which I have all over the place here, um, to configure the camera, the first thing you do is connect the camera to the network. And then you, it gets a default IP address. And then you go to that default IP address and you enter a username password to talk to it, right? And then you can change the username password, but that's how you communicate with cameras, with all this stuff, right, Jeff? Yep. Yep, it's a it's got a simple uh, web interface for you to set it up, like Richard was referring to, and then uh, okay, stop, stop. It, so so that that screen, right? Go back to that screen. So this screen, where did this yep. screen come? This screen was rendered entirely from the built-in web server that's on the printer. Okay, this is yep. kind of a fundamental thing, and if people haven't seen this, it's like different for them. So everyone's following along with this. We're good. Okay, so. So the idea is that he put this request to his printer. This IP won't work where you're at because it's a it's a private IP on his private network, right? Yep. But theoretically, if it was a static address, you could type in this address in the Philippines. It would go all the way around the internet, hit his printer, and you could talk to his printer if it was a static address and you had the uh, the c credentials, the username, and password. Because you have to notice you have to log on, right? So sure, yep, sure thing. Yeah, if if you were to expose this. Um, to the open internet, either via a static public IP address or some other other methods that you could certainly take, uh, you could hit this printer from anywhere in the world. I don't know how much I would recommend leaving it wide open like that. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. You never know if it could be a vector for attack on your own network, but there, there are certainly some secure ways that you could go about handling it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So... So go ahead and make the uh, so, so 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 this is how you're going to start things going right. You're going to configure. You're going to talk to your printer right now. In the case of the cash drawer, um, the cash drawer is connected to the to this printer. So the printer yep. is getting the commands and passing them through and telling the cash drawer to open up, basically, right? Exactly. Yep. Are all the cash drawers like this? So you have to have a printer first and then do the cash drawer. 
Because that would not uh, normally, normally be something I would think about, right? So. I believe all the star print. I believe that there's like two or three cash drawers that Star offers. I believe all the ones that are compatible do. Uh, they do connect to the printer itself. Um, it's just a, an. It's they consider it a peripheral to the printer. Oh, okay. So a cash drawer is considered a an accessory to the printer and a peripheral exactly. or an external accessory. Okay. And there's other accessories. It's not just printers, things like a, a buzzer. If you were to put this printer in a kitchen, you could make it buzz to alert the kitchen staff that, Hey, there's a new ticket. Oh yeah. Get off your and start cooking. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yep. Yeah. yep. Okay, cool. Uh, Josh Sherman says he has two or 300 cameras. Very familiar with it. We also have dozens of zebra printers. Yeah. We are playing with zebra printers too. Um, in fact, Jeff, are you still doing the zebra thing or is that kind of on the back burner or what are you doing with the yep. zebra printer? I'm getting started on zebra. Uh, I started just last week. Uh, we'll, we'll have a, an integration sort of the same kind of thing where we can build up, uh, build okay. up commands to send off documents. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cause printing the printing an image to the star printer is a real hack, right? You're a pretty talented guy, much sharper than I am. And, and so printing an image to the printer has been kind of a pain to this. These yeah, printers. you would have to generate uh, JavaScript. You'd have to use a web viewer basically um, to do it because you have to actually go through every pixel of the image for star for the web print um, surface and look at every pixel and tell me what's its red, green, blue, and uh, alpha value, Oof. which is not something that FileMaker does natively. So you either need a plugin or to use JavaScript. Oh, Monkey Bread probably does it. <laughs> Monkey Bird, I, I believe, can in fact do it. Yes. <laughs> oh, Christian Schmidt's not here, but if he was here, he'd be like, oh, yeah, my program does it. <laughs> All right, good. So go ahead and uh, walk us. So show us your FileMaker app that you're playing with, because I recognize this app. This is the one that you were doing the print job with, right? Yep. This is the same thing. And in fact, we have the document that we built live last so, time. So you, the... you built this app, correct? This doesn't come this... with. Yes. Okay. I built this, and it's what we gave away. Well, well, I'm sure we can give it away at the end of today, too. Uh, to whoever wants it that allows you to use it comes with the scripts you need um you could just copy those scripts into your existing filemaker solution if you wanted to um, but it's a really it, it helps you to demo how you would do go about building something like a receipt or a pick ticket or why don't or you run like through that. this again because I, I mean we're going to talk about the cash but the, you said the cash was really basic right so I'm not, yep it's I'm, it's it's just an extra command essentially okay uh, so why don't you because there's a lot this. of people here haven't seen this before so walk us through this end to end beginning walk us through the script on this i know there's really smart people here but just pretend like they're average level iq right so not really sure. java programmer type people so say we're so 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 ormond's gonna hate this so just pretend here we go right here for this just pretend we're all low code people here right <laughs> <laughs> we're all low code right so there we go. Because some of us are. That's all we do. I don't do. I used to do high code stuff back in the day, but you know, now that I manage, I don't have time for that. So, sure. Yeah, low code's great, even if you are good at high code, because you can just make things much more quickly. Fa yeah, much so, more fast. Uh, much more fastly. Hundred percent. Fa much more fastly. I'm not sure that's a word, but we'll try that. So. Yeah, something like that. All right. Yeah, so, right. so, so this, so this print between every my uh, just for my limited opinion. The print, the way this the star system works, sucks a big giant whatever. You can insert the pickle in there. How about it? it sucks pickles? And but we're gonna but but it is a piece of hardware. It's common in use. We'll compare it against the zebra printer when we get that far. But how you set this up is a real hack. So so walk us through this. So we have, on the left we have the available commands, and on the right are the commands that we're gonna send for this request. Yep. Right. So on the left are, you can go through and add whatever of these commands that you want. Um, there's a lot in here. Some of them are very helpful, like to just give it the data for a barcode and it will just print the barcode. You don't have to try and generate a barcode. Okay. Um, and then over here on the right is actually a portal for a related table of the commands that we're sending. And I know that looks like a lot, but it's So it's let not... me help out. The first thing I didn't understand. So this is command one, command two, command yep. three. I can't really draw mm -hmm. so fuzzy. And so when <laughs> we say the send button, it's going to a script that's going to basically loop through all these and formulate the command to shoot to the printer so step one is this step two is this step three is this and the reason we're doing it this way is the code is really ugly i mean it sucks pickles right so yep and you can preview it here um let's find something a little more complicated like to tell it to write a line of text that just says uh uh using curl that's all this text is you have to give it all this other information like what font to use the character space the width and things like that and it wants it in this um, quasi, basically it's a, a, a web safe version of XML. Um, 
if you've ever used XML, this will look familiar to you. It's just the it's harder to read because they want to uh, URL encode the XML before they send it. So, uh, but yep. So we start up at the top. We initialize a document. We tell it how to align things, and then we start to add elements like text. We tell it to feed, um, add more text. We can add barcode, um, things like that. And this was just a simple document we used to demo. And once we're all done building it, um, we click, we send it off to the printer, and it prints out the the receipt. It's a, the the printer does all of the um, the rendering of the document on its end, so you don't yeah. have to deal and with it. Yeah, and so basically, what we would have to do to get an image on there, we'd have to create another command over here, and somehow you would specify the image in here, and then it would have to base sixty four with some RGB, and then in, it kind of inject it into this command stack so we want yeah, you run one much. of these real quick for us and so sure just go ahead and hit the button so we can see it run on this so we're going to press the button and then we'll probably hear it maybe or not so quick send give it just a second sometimes it decides it's going to you know be slow but take oh it's the first time you're hitting that web server right waking it up is yeah. that what it is yeah it'll it'll come out here in a second okay we heard that now do it again yep. now do it again see what the delay is on the, if you start See, it's instantaneous, so you have to kind of wake up the printer. All right, so, uh, so go ahead and switch to camera mode so we can see that there was actually – it's not you're not just making little motor noise with your mouth, right? <laughs> okay, there we go. So just grab that. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So here's the oh, two and you copies. Passed the, you and you passed the cut command too, right? So it cuts like yes. 90% of it. Cut. Yep. It, it, so that way it cuts for you. You don't have to deal with that. And on this, you can see some of the – examples of what you can do let's see if it'll kind of focus darken darken up a little bit it's too it's out of there it goes there it is now it's almost in focus yeah the camera i have to give you an app so you can uh, force the focus to fix on it so but yeah that's yeah. the idea so yeah it can do different line types and it can do different barcode types it's it's pretty convenient so all right that's all right rough. Well, uh, okay, so that's what – so now let's talk about uh, – so any uh, questions on the basics of this? So, I mean, we're going to walk through the script on it, but I want to get to the part where we add the cash drawer thing to it, right? So, And so this is the exact same document we're looking at, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and add the uh, cash drawer to the end of it so you can see how simple this is. Um, there are two, two channels that has to do with uh, the buzzer, and some of the printers actually allow you to have two peripherals plugged in. Um, but we go ahead and we just add the peripheral element. You can see it added to the very bottom of the document here. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. So it's a so peripheral is channel one. Yep. Yeah, so it's the channel one is the default. Um, if you need to change it, you'll know you'll need to change it. Okay. The default. And then is what's very, the two hundred again? The two hundred is what? These are milliseconds. The on time and off time. That also is mostly to do with buzzers, but it's a required uh, value. So you can tell it to buzz on for 200, uh, 200 milliseconds. And then off, and sometimes it will repeat. Is that um, the latch? It. Like the latch opens and the latch closes? Um, I think it would apply to the latch, but that is more, like I said, it applies a lot more to um, if you're using like a kitchen buzzer. It's the uh, the amount of time that that sound is going to ring for. All right. Well, why don't you give it the old uh, cost? So it we'll go ahead and click send here you'll hear it print and then you'll hear that cash drawer pop okay so apparently cameron just buzzed in and he wants to hear more about cheesecake but that's not our thing so uh i heard i heard it print and then did it ding did it pop out it did and i will uh i'll wow. go ahead and switch to video so we can do it one more time let's see here so uh i'll click it on three two one Oh, really good, you know. Yeah. But you also don't have to print anything like I showed earlier. You can just pop the cash drawer, which is convenient for certain transactions. It is an entirely uh, independent part of the uh, API for wow. web print. Wow, wow. Is, is that cash drawer bolted down? Not yet. It's not. It's on his <sighs> development desk. It would be. Well, it's got big rubber grommets on it. I mean, I, you probably it does should. have big rubber feet. You probably want to take the drawer out and bolt it down or do something right yes uh yeah you can and there's actually ways to mount it underneath a countertop as well but uh, so it's like yeah. got a very low footprint that's kind of nice question from Stu: yep. how good was the documentation for the api and is that typical 
uh, the documentation from from Star yes. uh, let, it was non-existent. So it sucks pickles again. Uh, why don't you walk us through how the app works? And we're gonna and we give this app to you folks. So if you want to get into this printer and use this, and we we all should look at the website about uh, this, like what models there are. But let's take a look at your code first. And all and I want I want to tell everyone just hold back on the laugh. And when you look at his code, because you know it, is, <laughs> it only is so good. Right? So, I'm, I'm I'm a little sensitive. What can I say? You know. Yeah, he's a very sensitive guy. So. Uh, so what do we do? Start at the beginning of the. Where so, do you want to see? Where do you want to see from? Well, okay. So when you build it, uh, these are what? All, uh, where are the? I mean, I guess these are all the build it prints, right? Is that what these are over here? The script ones. Uh, that's where you build it. These are the build it uh, scripts here. And they basically paste the stuff. So it's basically there's two parts. This where you build your commands in the portal in the sequence. The order they will execute, right? Yep. And then you have the uh, the actual print job. So if you want to show us that, that might be and start with that. Something, not. Uh, uh, I notice a lot of green commenting here. This is really good comments. This is awesome. I know so, it's great, right? I, uh, I like to write it. All right. Well, then now you have to verbally walk us through it. So start at the beginning, <laughs> right? Yep. So uh, so say we were gonna uh, let's say we add text, and I'll just show you what we do here handy dandy script debugger so let's not accidentally click buttons we don't mean to so we'll just make our text test and those are the default values that are right there um, as you can see so we'll go ahead and click add text element which will call the add text element command which then that's just a UI command I don't know why there's so much white space there that's quite interesting uh, so here we go ahead and we set all of our defaults um, just to make things easier. If you call the command, anything like that, if you just omit things, it will uh, automatically default to these values. It will check to make sure that you have data. If you don't, um, it'll just yell at you and won't let you continue. And then from there, uh, it's going to go ahead and jump in and check to make sure that your code page value is correct. This is some this is the way that we test to make sure that values that you pass are actually valid uh, on the web print end. And we use a value list to hold the appropriate or the, uh, the valid values and we just test against the value list. Um, so this is, this you'll never call um, these scripts. They're just checking to see if your value does exist in the value list, meaning it's a valid uh, or a parameter for that, uh, yeah, for that parameter, a value, valid value for that parameter, I should say. Uh, so we step down into here, we check to see if there's an error. It does this for a few things. On text, there's several that it checks. Uh, you saw a text code page. So that's the code page value that is the UTF-8, basically your encoding. Um, it checks to see if your international uh, value is, is valid or not. Uh, it checks to see if the font value is valid. Uh, make sure that your other values are within the appropriate ranges. These are all these are all restrictions that are set from Star Web Print. Um, they're the only values that are valid uh, for their API. So that's why we check these things. Uh, come through here. These are just Boolean values. So we check to see if you've set them as true. Otherwise, we assume they're false because that's the default. Um, you can pass binary information, and if it is binary, it escapes it a little differently. Otherwise, it just escapes the string uh, the appropriate way, and I'll show you how that works. Yeah, this is pretty technically challenging here. I'm glad you have a sample file because it'd be like, ugh. Yeah, trying to trying to remember all of the valid uh, the ranges that things are in is is frustrating and annoying. Um, so that's why I made sure I put all these these controls in place. And the truth is most of the defaults will work pretty well for you outside of like with text being able to emphasize underline um, and maybe changing the sizes which they're fairly flexible but things like international and code page that you, you're not really going to have a huge amount of changing if you know maybe if you're in a different country you'll change it the one time and once you find a value that works for you you just stick with it um, there's not a lot of jumping around which does help um, so in here we go into our uh, escape. We just go ahead and escape out particular uh, values. Um, so we go through and we just use the substitute command with multiple uh, 
um, search and replace values, as you can see here, and I will show that to you. Actually, I can show it to you right now. Um, so that's a, a fun fact. I don't know if everybody knows that, that you can substitute multiple things at once um, using this syntax at the substitute command. Uh, so we substitute all of the less than, the greater than, the ampersands, and any paragraph uh, or line break symbols with their appropriate um, replacements that WebPrint expects. So that way, when the text does make it to WebPrint, it will uh, look the way you want it to. Uh, so once we've encoded that, we return it back out. And this variable here just sets it in the correct um, format that WebPrint expects with all of your uh, parameters included and just spits out the text at the end. So this is where if you want to uh, integrate it with your own solution, you do something a little different. So you, instead of using this particular script here where we then create a, uh, a record that uses that result, we just take the result and I don't know why this is looking like this. We take the result and you would take the result and, and store it however you want. If you do one big script to create a receipt, you just have a variable you keep coming back to and you add that text to the end of that variable. And at the end, you uh, you call the send script, which I'll show you in a minute with that text and it will uh, it'll send off to the document. So you don't have to use, you know, write these as records to tables by any means. Um, so that is... Pretty good that's stuff. That, questions along that, the way? Questions? 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 Anyone? I'm kind of zooming in here a little bit so people can see your text, but yeah. Sure. So well, it looks like somebody's asking any, about. Any Postman. Oh. Yeah, there's a conversation about APIs and vendors and vendors doing stuff. Oh, right? yeah, I see. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they they do not have uh, really any, any documentation on the WebPrint API, so. Luckily, I uh, reverse engineered it for you, so you don't have to do that. Don't have to deal with that. So. Wow, that's awful nice of you. So yeah, that's that's the you know sort of the ten thousand foot view of how you add elements. Um, like I said, I wouldn't dig too deep into what these scripts are doing. I can certainly comment them more before we distribute it again. Um, do you have time but, to comment it? Right, because it might yeah, be can, useful. Because I mean, there's, I can comment there's it, like yeah, zero comments here. It's hard for me to tell people to comment their code when my people don't do that at all. It's like, hey, do as I say, not as I do. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I. Uh, yeah. So, I, that's that was part of it. Is since this is meant to be mostly left alone, and you would just call the command that you need to create the element you need. Uh, I didn't spend any time commenting, but I can certainly add those in. So. Uh, yeah, so we'll add that, add some comments in there. And once you're done and you have your document, um, if you're using a table view version, it would work the same way here. Otherwise, if you want to do it just in a single variable, whether it's global or uh, a local variable in one big script, you pass that text onto the send command, um, which will go ahead and... Okay, so uh, do that again. I was off screen. I was about to cover something because it sounded like you were about to land the airplane already, but go back to that one more time and cover that. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So go, so back, the, back, the, go back about 60 seconds. The send command. The send command. Yep. So uh, you the send command just takes in a few variables in your IP if it's secure and you can pass a port if you need to. Um, and then it will come here. It will call the generate document script, which the current one uh, will go ahead and list out. It uses a list to grab the related records and make it. Mm. But we'll, uh, but what we can do is we'll add the script parameter so you can pass it a. Um, I'm going to change that script up a little bit, and you'll pass it your text, whether that's listed like this or whether it's a variable, however you want to do it. So it sticks so it all the, into so the, the list body. function is getting the all the code from these related lines. So basically, it's yep. like doing a loop command for those of you a loop and then in loop yep. and, and it's flipping through Pretty the records much. really fast. Except that you did it very. See that that's in the documentation. I would say something like that, right? Just if it was yeah. Just because. And I'm gonna I'll I'm gonna change that slightly um, to make it easier to drop these scripts into uh, what you're doing. But yeah, the list command gives us something like this. Ugh. This is all this is all the content that's on that related table. It's really ugly, 
And there's a reason that uh, we try to make it so you don't have to deal with all that because trying to construct that at any point is hard enough. So, uh, oh, did you catch Stu's question? Who's Stu, Stu's question? Where? How, how many? Had a... How error tolerant is the API? Well, if you put the code in incorrectly, I think it's probably just gonna make toilet paper out of the printer, right? I mean, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, it'll yell at you. The scripts I have will keep you from from most of the errors that you could find. Obviously, you could have like the printer blew up type problems, but um, for the most part, it's a pretty m minimal web server that it runs. So it's, it's I haven't run into any um, errors that are on its end other than it ran out of paper or so that, you know, uh, uh, it wasn't closed properly, like that the physically wasn't closed, like um, the doors weren't closed on it. Yeah. Or you sent things in the wrong format and these scripts are there to keep you from sending them in the wrong format. It'll yell at you if, if things are out of, uh, are, are out of spec, I guess is the, is the way to describe it, so. Are you really gonna comment your file or is that just you trying to make me feel better? I can comment it if you'd like me to. How long would it take you to put some comments in it? Like if I buy an hour's worth of comments, how far does that get me? That, that'd probably cover at least most of the scripts that if not all the scripts people would actually use the, the okay. things you would copy over. And I'll put a little uh, how to as well for okay, how to cool. copy those scripts into your solution. All right, cool. All right, well, that's it for today. It's an early day, folks. I'm going to cut out. We don't have anything else going on. Tomorrow's a very, 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 very basic day. Maybe we can have Kyle come in. Kyle, are you around tomorrow? You want to come in and play uh, uh, Boolean list value uh, basics with me? You want to come help with that? If you're around, let me know. Talk to Margaret. Uh, but tomorrow's like a basic warm-up for the uh, – for Thursday and Friday with Nick Hunter. And Nick will probably start off basic and then accelerate into some really crazy stuff the way he normally rolls. So I do appreciate it. We will get this, uh, the sample file reposted tomorrow. Hopefully within the next day or two, we'll have this updated file over here reposted wherever it went. I don't know where it went. Is it this? There it is. Yeah, this file here. Yep. And good job. So any final question about the cash drawer? Yeah, I want a machine that uh, shoots dollar bills out. That's a, that's a, it's an IoT integration I want to do. People wanted to do that, that renting money thing with those guns. We could probably integrate a money counter. Yeah, that would be cool. You put a money the counter, and then it sends the information back to FileMaker. Oh, Josh said it was no cash. It was an error drawer. Yes, that's because I don't have any cash. Yes, he doesn't have stacks of money like I do. That's no big deal. That's just, that's just because he's not the boss. Um, I yeah. mean, I could give him a stack of ten thousand dollars, but he that be might be his last day at at, at RCC. He'd just be like, poof, gone, baby. So yeah, no. Uh, I could create an advanced radio check button demo. Yeah, we kind of have that, Kyle. We'll be here tomorrow with that. So, uh, but yeah, you have you have you have less than twenty four hours to figure it out. So give me a. Why, why don't you give Margaret a call and we'll see what we can do tomorrow. Everyone, I appreciate it. See you. Catch you tomorrow. Bye. to give you a chance, and that's all you can ask for. Trying to rally, down 10, 925 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot, goes down. Stands in, throws it left for Amendola, reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10, Ooh. rolling to the 9. Ball slightly behind him, but Danny makes the grab.